sing for me. Oh! Right. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? When you're first starting out, it's almost like a goal, like your first goal as a band would be to go into a studio and get like a professional proper recording done. But for a lot of bands, there isn't a hell of a lot of preparation that goes into it. And from experience, you need preparation. You need to be prepared for going into the studio because it's your time and your money that you will be wasting if you aren't prepared. We've put together a little list of things that you need to do to be prepared for the studio, some things to think about. There are some things that differ studio recordings to uh, live performances of a song or of an entire like uh, EPs worth of songs or albums worth of songs. There are things that differ from the live version to the studio version. We're gonna run some ideas past you about how to maybe adapt your songs for studio because there are some things that you'll need to know beforehand to get that style, to get a studio album that sounds like a proper studio album. Here is the list of things that you need to do to prepare yourself for the studio. The first thing you need to do when preparing to go into the studio is demo your tracks. I think this is probably the most overlooked of all the things. Yeah. We can't overstate how important demoing your tracks is because it's alright playing your tracks and hearing them that way, but when you actually sit down with a moderately alright recorded version and listen to it, you get a whole different feel to the song. You experience the song in a different way from playing it to just listening to it. Do that and you will definitely pick out things that you'd want to change or improve or even just like... Uh, the way that the song is instrumented, you could be like, oh, well, in the verse, we could completely like take the guitars out there and that sounds so much better. Or, oh, I've had an idea for a, uh, an extra bit of um, riff that we could put in for this bit. Be because you're not concentrating on what you're playing, you're just concentrating on the song itself, which helps you to analyze it. That leads us on to the second point on the list, which is get opinions from people. Get opinions on the demos. So you've recorded some rough tracks. If you give them to people, that they're, they're not gonna slate on oh this sounds really badly recorded or anything because provided that you go to them and tell them that it's just a demo it's just a rough recording you want to know about the song you want to know what their opinion of the song is people will understand and they will give you honest opinions of the song do that it's very 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 helpful make sure to get outside opinions as well don't just go to your friends or your family because if you give it to your mom she's gonna go oh this is really good this yeah it's gonna make you millions they're gonna give you a biased opinion give it to people who you might be friends with, but you're not that close to. I wouldn't advise giving it to your best friend. Or do, but also give it to loads of other people as well. Yeah, that. It's the reasons why they like it or hate it that you want to try and get it. Because someone just saying that they hate it isn't going to help. People just saying that they like it isn't going to help. If someone says they don't like it, okay, why don't they like it? Well, I don't really like that vocal style. Wouldn't it be better like this? Or anything like... People, granted, have got to have an open mind about it because... If they only listen to Megadeth and you're giving them something that sounds like Arctic Monkeys, they aren't going to like it, end of. So giving it to people that are like that, you aren't going to benefit from. If you give it to a wide range of people, that will solve that problem. You will get some good reviews, you will get some bad reviews. Avoid posting it on banned social medias or anything like that. Avoid associating your banned persona with those demos because they aren't finished recordings and you shouldn't treat them as finished recordings. Uh, do both guitarists, hang on, hang on, I'm reading the thing. <laughs> there are certain precautions that you need to be taking in the studio to ensure that you have the perfect finished song that you're going in to get. You need to write extra guitar. You have to make sure that both or all of your guitarists know how to play all the rhythm guitar parts. There's a reason for this, because live, if someone is playing a riff, then naturally they won't be playing the rhythm parts. The rhythm parts being like the chords that are behind the riff. In the studio, you will be recording the riffs, the solos, melodies, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is kind of just for guitars. Most other instruments won't work like this, but in popular rock music production, this is how it works. So riffs, solos, extra melodies, that kind of stuff will be recorded on different tracks. Typically when you listen to a song, you will have a guitar part panned all the way into the left ear and a guitar part panned all the way into the right ear. On those tracks, you won't have the solos and you won't have the riffs. The riffs will be panned generally down the middle so it sounds like they're in the center of the track because they are uh, a main part, like vocals will be down the middle, drums, the main drums, kick, snare will be down the middle. The person who will normally be playing the riff at the point in the studio when they're playing their track, at the point of the song where the riff should start, they can't play that riff 
at that part of the song anymore. They're going to be playing it later on a different track, which means they're going to have to play the rhythm, the rhythm guitar that the other guitarist is playing. You need to already know it. Don't get in the studio, get to that part and go, what am I going to play here? You need to be playing what the other guitarist is playing. Well, we'd advise not just having the other guitarist record it for you, because that means having them play all of their part and part of your part. Like say if one guitarist is doing all of the left, the left ear guitar and the other guitarist is doing all the right ear guitar, try and keep it like that as much as possible. So actually do, we used to do this. We used to do run throughs of the tracks before we started recording them where we wouldn't play any riffs. We wouldn't play any solos and both of us, cause both of us were the guitarists, we would play the entire rhythm tracks together. So we were in sync. So we knew what the strumming patterns were. So we knew the intricacies of it. The intricacies, I can't say that. The intricacies of, of, of the track and we knew exactly what each other were doing. So when we got into the studio recording it, we knew what we were doing. Wow, that was intense. Yeah, I wanna, I, that, Yeah, I was gonna make an extra point. I was gonna go ahead. Yeah, but you're looking over there. Go ahead. I'm not. You will find on. <laughs> you will find. Okay, I'm good. You will find on some heavily produced. <laughs> Again, I'm when you're watching the video, it puts people off. Yeah, no, they're wondering what you're doing. I'm considering like painting my room. I'm gonna paint it that color that's over there. So I'm going I'm just. I'm just shit. getting a gist for I where everything needs to be. Give a shit. You will notice on some popular albums, for example, the first Arctic Monkeys album, that Joey's still doing it. The first Arctic Monkeys album, that they don't do what I've just said. So for the riff tracks, um, for, for, um, for example, Mardi Bum, you'll notice that the guitars, even if it's playing a melody, even if it's playing a lead part or a solo, it's panned one side, because Alex Turner and the other guitarist, don't know his name, you probably do. Jamie Cook. Them too, they have... They, they play the guitar part once and their guitar part is panned one to the left, one to the right, end of, done. I mean, you can do that, but... It depends on what kind of sound you want. If you're going for like a really raw indie sound, then that might be a good idea. But if you're like a really high polished metal or shoegaze band, then I'd advise yeah. against it. Yeah, but if you want a bigger sound, if you want to sound bigger, the way to do that is to add in more guitar parts. And the, the most basic way to add in more guitar parts is to strip the solos and riffs out of the rhythm tracks and put them on afterwards. Generally, you'll find in music like that that the song will sound less impactful when you go to do a solo because all of the rhythm guitar disappears, which is a problem that you'll have if you are just one guitarist. Because if you have two guitarists, the way of solving that problem is to have the two guitars constantly be playing chords so that when you put the solo on top, you're not taking anything away. You're only adding. Good speech. Yeah, thanks. That leads perfectly into the next point, which is plan extra guitar parts. So not just riffs and solos, but um, little high intricate bits that you can put maybe like a load of reverb on and put in the background of a track or... Guitar harmonies. Yeah, so like... Uh, Joe's talked about it before in a shopping song right in, I'll link that up there. Um, where? There, exactly where you're looking. Really? Yeah, perfect. Don't write a harmony for every single part of every single song. Don't write a high end, high counter melody riff thing for every single part of every single song because that will take away the effect that it has. Be aware that the flavors that you're adding by putting them in should be done sparingly. Consider what kind of effects you're going to put on your vocals when you're in the studio. When you've been playing your song, when you've been writing it in the practice room, you probably haven't been putting many effects, maybe reverb, on the vocals. When you're in the studio, you have the opportunity to do whatever the hell you want. Mm. If you have, say, a really aggressive song, then a good thing to do would be to layer your vocals, to do loads of tracks and EQ them all slightly differently so it sounds like a big crowd of people singing, or add what we like to call a radio effect onto your vocals. Which would, uh, I believe most people would call it a, ta a telephone EQ. Oh. So that is taking a bit of the top end out. I get that you probably won't be engineering it if you're going into the studio, so this doesn't really matter. But the idea is that you take a bit of the high end off and a lot of the low end off and you end, w the vocal is then only coming through on a certain amount of frequencies. Uh, they are the frequencies that your phone speakers will do. So it sounds like, mm. sounds like someone c coming through a phone, but you could... You it can be played around with and you can add like delays on it to make it sound like it's coming through a speakerphone system or anything like that. Um, just... Or you can just blatantly distort your vocals. Yeah, that's what I'm doing on 
with my band that we're recording. Um, speaking of which, um, we've got like almost like a bit of a song done, like nearly almost properly done. Here's half a second of that. That was nice, wasn't it? Aren't you ready for that to come out proper? So it's, it's worth thinking about, do you actually want any effects on your vocals? There are countless amounts of different things that you can do. Maybe experiment with that when you're demoing. See what works, see what doesn't work. Try things that you wouldn't even think to do. Like, if you're doing R&B, jazzy kind of stuff, whack some distortion on it, see what it sounds like. It might sound crap. I suppose it's dependent on each song as well. Some songs you might want to use stuff, some songs you might not. That adds variation to your EP or album or single. That leading perfectly on, write extra backing vocal parts. So you might just have a singer and no backing vocalists in the band. That doesn't mean you can't put backing vocals in on the studio version. And or um, vocals in on the studio version, backing vocals in on the studio version, and then teach the other members of the band to do what the lead singer did for the backing vocals in the studio, teach the other band members to do that live. Including you can do stuff like gang vocals, which is when it sounds like a load of people like shouting a lyric or whatever, that's called gang vocals. Um, popular in like pop punk kind of stuff. I don't think I've heard it done in much other types of music. Rap's obviously got some Metal stuff does like it. Sometimes. Think about if you want to put something like that into your tracks, because obviously you can't do that live unless you've got an entire crowd of people that know the, w the words. Let you lead with that. Drum effects. Nope. Notice how you finished the word effects looking over there. Drum effects. Did, did you notice that? Drum effects. I wasn't doing it for serious. For serious. For serious. For serious. Um, Is that like what Harry Potter did in like thing? He did it for serious. I'm done. Finish it by yourself. You need to consider what kind of effects that you're going to put on your drums. You're going to need to consider what kind of effects you're going to put on everything in your songs, really. This is things that you need to kind of know before you go into the studio, and this is something that you'll hopefully kind of figure out after you've done your demos and your pre-production. Yeah, again, mess around with it in your demos. Whack a phaser on your drums for, for certain parts of the songs. See what it sounds like. You might not like it. Use drum effects as little as possible because you cannot do it live. There is absolutely no way of doing drum effects live unless you've got the engineer on the desk physically manning the effects and 90% of engineer, engineers, unless you're physically hiring them, will not do that. Be aware of that when you're writing things for the studio, that you can't deviate too far away from what you're writing for live because you need the songs to sound like the same song. You need to make sure... No, you're going, yeah, I didn't... Yeah, I, didn't yeah, I watched I was, you do yeah. it! No, it's wrong. Wrong. You need to make sure. <laughs> you need to make sure that you can play all of your tracks to a click track, and therefore you also need to know what speed your tracks are being played at. What's a click track? A click track is essentially a digital metronome that the engineer will usually give you to make sure you keep in time to a certain BPM that your song is in, which you would already hopefully know. So a click track sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll edit that. In. I suppose this. Again, like the two guitars panned, putting wrist down the middle thing. 100% necessary? You don't have to do it. I guess it's another one of them things that if you want to sound really pure and polished and perfect in every single way, then use one. But if you want the raw DIY sound, then maybe don't use one. I, sp I suppose it's to bring it a bit in from that, because you're obviously saying, if you want this, do a click. If you want that, don't use a click. If you were, even if you want to be in the middle, if you don't want to be like super polished or you don't want to be like super raw, if you're in the middle, use a click. It's only if you're more than willing to sound like you're slightly speeding up or slightly slowing down at certain sections. If you want that sound, don't use a click. Pretty much every other situation, I'd recommend using a click. Because if you just want to sound like you're just playing your songs well, putting it to a click will help do that. It will help you see any problems with timing that someone might have so you can redo takes uh, that previously you won't have found without using a click. Is there anything else that we've missed? I don't think so. No, just prepare for when you go into a studio because it's your time and your money that you're gonna waste if you don't prepare. Yeah. I said Not that, cheap. I said that in the intro, but it was Joe that wrote that, so. I'm taking credit for that. Yeah, so that, that'll be why he said it again. Last week, um, obviously we did the slightly longer video we need in to... doing so, we forgot to do our playlists. 
I'd already started before you remembered. Mm -hmm. So every month we choose uh, our favourite song of that month. It doesn't have to be released in that month. It can be released whenever we like. It's just our favourite song for that month. And we add it to a playlist so that at the end of the year we have an entire playlist of 24 songs of the songs that we like throughout that year. So then you can see all the songs that we like throughout the year and we can look back and see all the songs that we've liked throughout the year. We've got to do that last week, so we're going to do it now. So this is July's? Yeah. Yeah, on the Reddit now, uh, the sidebar on the Reddit, it's featured what song our songs of the month are, and I will make a new thread on the Reddit so you can tell us what your favourite song is of the month, and we'll go through and listen to what your favourite songs are too. Ed, what is your favourite song of this month? My favourite song has to be... What are you going to add? Is it going to be some grime? You've been listening to a lot of grime recently. I've, yeah, I've developed a taste for the underground scene. So... When we were in Liverpool, when we did the little video uh, in when we went to Liverpool Sound City, Joe had a lot of grime on in that hotel room. I'm going to pick this month, Next Type by Temper T. Please listen to this song. If you haven't listened to any song that we've ever put into the playlist before, listen to this song. Oh, nine. I'm going to pick Thank God for Girls by Weezer. Be only because it's... A little weird track. I don't like the chorus lyrics. I don't like the fact that it's saying thank God for girls. I think that's a bit weird. But the verses of it are like borderline rappy. And I really like it. Definitely listen to his and whatever. They'll be added. Tell us your favourite songs in the Reddit. Because that's the thing that we're trying out now. And we need people to actually use it and stuff. So please come over to our Reddit and share some stuff. Last week I made a thing on the Reddit that was asking what instruments you use and equipment and stuff. Didn't promote on the video whatsoever, so go over to that as well and tell us what instruments you use and pedals, amps, that kind of stuff, because we're... Why not? Why not share with everyone else what you use and what your favourite things are? Remember that, Trevor McDonald, that you used to have yeah, tonight with Trevor McDonald? No, that's not the right. Is that the Channel 5 News? I don't know. I think that's Channel 5 News. That was not what, that was not what I was singing. Dude. This was what I was singing! <laughs> that was what I was singing! I thought it was Channel 5 News and everything oh and it wasn't, it God. was actually tonight with Trevor McDonald. Thank you and good night.